let's think about the interactions between individuals on the market. Now, when do they have an impact on market equilibrium? So let's use this crazy graph to find out. So panel A on the left-hand side is for a typical farm with its short-run supply curve. Where's that? Have you asked yourself where's the short-run supply curve? If you have, then you may want to go back to the production and supply part. Now, at some point we talk about that. So actually the part of the short-run marginal cost curve, which is above the short-run average cost curve is the short-run supply curve of the firm. Now, from profit maximization assumption, okay? And at the market price P1, firm is selling Q1 products. That's for the firm. And the middle panels for the market with aggregated demand and aggregated supply, they intersect at one point and that's the market equilibrium for price P1 and the equilibrium quantity Q1. Uh, and on the right hand side with panel C, that's for a typical individual or more precisely a typical demander, the buyer of the market now yeah. with, uh, oh, okay. That curve should not be there yet. Anyhow, this is the demand curve of this demander. It's a typical average demander, so to say, who's demanding Q1 bar product at this market price P1. Nah? So the market is at its equilibrium at the moment. Now that light should occur. Okay. This E, the shift in demand for that individual, but only that one. Nah? He or she alone. No one else shifted the demand curve. And what happens? Is there any effect on market equilibrium? From here, you may guess already, the answer is no. The equilibrium stay the same. Nah. Market price stay the same. Equilibrium quantity stay the same. Why? Because remember, we assume that there's many, many, many demanders on this perfect competitive market, right? So one person alone, when the demand curve of this person shifts upward or downward, the effect of that shift to the market equilibrium will be almost very close to zero, okay? However, if the aggregated, the total market demand shift for example, there's like a trend in consumption or uh, a tendency like with, you heard about it with uh, growing economies like Vietnam, China, India. In the last decades, because of economic growth, we consume much more meat and fruit and veggie product instead of stable food. So these general tendencies indicates a shift in demand yeah, for these food groups. So that is when a sufficiently large number of individuals or demanders change their consumption or buying pattern. Yeah. Then the demand shifts. It's like also shift towards more organic product here in Germany and less uh, from conventional uh, agricultural product, for example. Nah. Then if this is what happens, then market equilibrium changes because now the yeah, new demand curve intersect with the supply at a different point. Nah. 
And at this point, because here we have a shift upward, so more demand, meaning price will be higher at new equilibrium and Q2s also will be larger than Q1. Yeah. So this example on this graph specifically, what happened here is called supply response. Why supply response? Because the way we framed the situation was there's a shift in demand first. Yeah. And because of that shift in demand, more product is demanded that of course will give a signal to the market by the increasing price. And with this signal, firms will increase production. And because why we didn't see it clearly on the graph is just because supply quantity moved along the supply curves in response to price increase. Yeah. And so it's actually only the same line, but there are supply responses there in the background. And that's why the new equilibrium change now. So if there are no supply response at all, for example, in case of um, a fixed price, um, let's say the government control the price, not allow it to increase, for certain products in Vietnam, nah, they have price control in that case, then supply will not respond because there's no price increase. What the incentive for producer to produce more or supplier to supply more? In that case, we will have a gap between the demanded quantity Q2 and the supplied quantity remain the same Q1 at the fixed price. And we call that an exit demand uh, amount. Okay. One last thing to remember with this slide is it's important to realize that in this short run situation, there's no new firms. So each of the existing firm will produce more when there's an upward shift of demand. No? And that indicates an increase in short-run profit. Why I talk about it now? Because that will be an important difference when we come later to the long-run analysis. No? So for now, just keep that in mind. Okay. We talk about some example of factors that may shift demand and supply earlier, but um, let's look at more specifically here. No. Starting first with demand. So the demand curves may shift due to some changes in factors that not directly from the market price. Okay. And that can be income. We talk about that earlier, uh, like when income increases, like general incomes in some countries increases, like for example, in Vietnam, that market demand for cars will increase. Mm -hmm. Also, it may be because of the budget allocated to different product groups. Like I said, they will consume more veggies and meat and fruit, but less stable food like rice, bread, that will be less. No? So there's a shift in consumption pattern there. The second factor is price of substitute or complements. For example, I drink coffee with milk. I like it much better than black coffee. And then if the price of coffee increases so much that I have to reduce my coffee consumption, then I don't need milk anymore. No. So I will also reduce buying milk. And because of that, price of, and if everyone faced the same problem that I face, 
then there will be a pattern over the, over there, and it may make an impact on the milk price. Uh, or complements. No. Uh, um, oh, that, that was the complements example. And the, for substitute, substitute, I could go back to the situation in Vietnam and said that before, not too long before, actually, we didn't have um, so much cheap flights. So flying is very expensive in Vietnam back then. Most of the case, people will go by train or by bus, even for very long distance, thousands of kilometers no? with bad road. We had to bear that. But now um, we have more allies. We have more commercial flights, which is very cheap. And then people will shift the demand for traveling toward flying compared to going by bus or by train like before. No? Or um, in income distribution, we talked about that earlier already. So if income of certain groups got affected, it will have larger impact on demand on other groups. Yeah. And population size. This is also intuitive. Yeah. Countries with uh, rapid growth in population certainly will have an upward shift in demand for certain goods like healthcare, education, food even. Yeah. And so now let's talk about the supply. So supply curves may shift also due to some change apart from the price of the good itself, like input prices, uh, technology, technologies, um, in the last few decades, for example, like with so many advanced technologies in agriculture, new seeds, new varieties, and new um, machineries, robotics technology, and so yield of crop production got increased quite a lot now. And this will make the supply curve shift upward, for example, a shift to the right to avoid confusion. Number of producers, I think we should talk about that more in the long run analysis. Now, other structure of the industry. So um, for some, some discussion about um, merging small scale farming up to large scale farming, especially in Vietnam, when we have only small household farming now. Then I said, okay, due to economy of scale, probably larger uh, size of farm will allow for more investment in machinery, uh, using resources more efficiently. And that will, at the end, make an increase in output supply. Now, these things are potential factors that may shift the supply curve. The shifts in supply curve, however, may have different implications for the case when the market demand is elastic compared to when it's inelastic. It sounds a little bit strange already now. We talk about supply curve, but then we have to look at the demand curve. Why is that the case? Let's look at this graph first. So if the supply Sorry, if the demand is elastic, so that means the demand curve is quite flat in this case. No, it's not so steep. Then when there is a supply shift, you will see that price changed a little, but quantity changed a lot. No. So people will consume much less only with a small increases in price. Uh, on the other hand, if the supply is inelastic, it means the consumption amount of certain goods or the demanded 
amount is relative, relatively fixed in a narrow range, not so much more, not so much less, like the case of stable food, for example. Now, if we have more, um, if even if with more te advanced technology, they produce much, much more bread, we will also consume not much more, right? So in that case, you would have price adjust a lot, but quantity adjust only a little bit with a supply shift. No. Back to the example with bread. No. Now due to, um, for example, um, scarce of um, wheat because of bad weather, a certain country face really bad bad harvest and they don't have wheat to produce uh, bread anymore and bread is the main staple food no so the supply could shift inwards meaning supply is less at every price then price will increase a lot no why the quantity demand is relatively fixed at a certain point because people need a certain amount to survive. No? And that's for inelastic demand. We have, remember, talk about the angle curve for food. That's the case, right? Okay. And because of this relationship between the elastic, the level of elastic of demand and the shift in supply, it would be reliable for the estimation of demand functions when we have shifts in the supply in the data. Nah. Why? Because when we're talking about the elastic city, the elastic uh, in elastic, we're talking about a slope of demand function. And in reality, it may not be so easy now to know exactly the demand function like what we have in exercises so far now it's given exact with exact parameter no so in that case we would need some shift and to see how much price changes and how much um, quantity changes when there's such shifts and then we could roughly estimate the functional or the, the shape of the demand curve. Similar idea apply for the shifts in demand curve. So how much such a shifts in demand will impact market equilibrium depends on how elastic the supply curve is. Yeah. So I don't know why they switch the position, but now panel A show a very stiff supply curve, meaning inelastic supply curve. No. So supply is rather fixed. It's like housing in bond, for example, just limited amount of accommodation. No. Whoever have experience with searching for housing in bond know that. Okay. And then when there's a shift in the demand for some bond some for some reason becomes more attractive in um in terms of job in terms of education the university and so get more international internationalized and so and so and so many people coming to bond now yeah, to live in bond want to live in bond and what happens? Then in that case, you could imagine uh, the quantity will not change so much, but the price will change a lot. And this is, to my feeling, what's happening in bond. <laughs> okay, just a, a funny example, but actually I feel it that way. Uh, so you see price of... Uh, Rented room increases, price of uh, flat increases, but in terms of quantity, there probably not much more around. Yeah. On the other hand, 
with panel B when you have relatively flat supply curve. That means supply is very elastic. Hmm? Elastic means producer or supplier willing to respond largely to price signal from the market. And in that case, when you have a shift in demand, then price will change slightly while quantity changes a lot. Yeah. One example of elastic supply, I would say for alcohol beverage, for in specific beer. Yeah. So now let's talk about in the normal year, normal before the pandemic, now around this time it would be the carnival season in Bonn here in this region now. And then suddenly demand shift, demand for beer shifts upwards very much. What will happen? Will the price of beer increases dramatically just because of that? No, right? Because the supply of beer is relatively elastic, so they could produce easily produce more. And for that, quantity will respond a lot. But price, you would not see so much increases in beer price in the supermarket around this season, right? That's an example. And like just like before, if we want to have reliable econometric estimation of the supply function, we need some shifts in the demand in our data. Because to repeat again, what's happening actually behind this is the response of the supply. Now, and it depends on the slope of the supply. So in order to find out that slope, and we need to get certain point, this point here, remember what I always did when I draw a line on the graph. Now I found some point and then connect this point. So the more shifts you have in the data, the more points you have in order to arrive in a more precise shape of the supply curve or in the other case, the demand curve. 